Good morning to you. After a very weak start earlier uh, in the, well, the first few days of the of the second quarter have been very weak, as I'm sure you know. And after that weak start, it looks like the bargain hunters are in this morning. Will this be um, uh, a just a little bounce? So will we continue to see downward pressure? Well, that's the big question. But right now, at least, the bargain hunters are buying pretty much everything so far this morning. Dylan Loomis points out that some of the ludicrous vehicles on display last weekend in Malibu had Texas manufacturing plates on them. Now, he makes it clear in his in part of his story last night on his YouTube channel that he's not suggesting that the Model 3s are now going to be made or some Model 3s are going to be made in Texas, but he just kind of leaves like that, like maybe. Well, of course, I suggested that months ago, talked to Brian White about it several times, is what are we going to do if the Model 3 just becomes the hot tip? What if it's really blowing out sales compared to the Model, or at least the increase in Model 3 sales in the United States is just really big? And, uh, you know, the Model Y not doing as well in terms of increases. I mean, the Model Y is the best-selling car in the world. And it's sometimes when you've got the best-selling car in the world, it's hard to keep adding on to that. On the other hand, I believe there's plenty of opportunity to sell lots more Model Ys in the United States. I've said this, I don't know, 500 times at least. You might be tired of hearing me say it, but we've got a big country and most of the country is not yet buying Model Ys or Model 3s or anything electric and so much less anything Tesla. So there's a great opportunity to sell e either one or both. But right now, the Model 3, in my opinion, even though it's a sedan, is the hot tip. Well, so if that happened and you needed more production, would you get it by switching over some production in Fremont? Is that the easier way? Or would it be easier to start the second line that I don't think is up yet on the Model Y, switch that to Model 3s down in Austin? Anyway, that's the long story short is maybe that's what's taking place. Something to really keep an eye on. Another place to keep your eye on is India. This has been a long developing story, but India finally did what they were supposed to do a couple of few weeks ago here. And they finally agreed to allow some imported cars to come in with low, much lower, not, not a little lower, much lower tariffs, as long as there was a deal to build a certain amount of dollars worth of factories and and have a presence in India, manufacturing vehicles, assembling vehicles, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that deal has been cut. Tesla is apparently now, according to uh, sources this morning, <laughs> is uh, they are uh, uh, beginning to uh, plan for producing in Berlin for India. I'm not sure why that is now. Some people would say, well, China and India don't get along, so you don't want to make the vehicles for India and China. Larry and I went through this a lot. We've taken a, a long look at it. There's a huge amount of trade between China and India, between China and Japan, between China and South Korea, between, I mean, all these countries do a lot of business in China. So why would they make the car in Berlin? Now, maybe there's a perception by the upper class in Berlin, the ones who could afford a Model Y, maybe there's some some idea that uh, the India population that could afford it would be more interested in a German built car. This is possible. Anyway, we'll see what happens there. That is the news anyway this morning. Elon says that he will be increasing the compensation for all AI engineers at Tesla in order to compete with what he is now characterized as the biggest talent competition he has ever seen in tech right now for AI engineers. We talked about this a little bit yesterday where uh, he had to actually outbid uh, his other company, X.AI, had to uh, outbid um, uh, <laughs> ChatGPT OpenAI, had to outbid them for one of his top uh, ta talented people down at Tesla. So that person has left Tesla, but is still in on the team, so to speak, uh, going over to X.AI. Kathy Wood has reiterated her $2,000 price target for Tesla within five years. 
Now, you may remember that she has had a price target as high as 5,000 in the past. She's now talking about 2,000. I'm not 100% sure why it's a lower price target at this point. She has, uh, 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 she's indicated um, that she's at this number despite the current trouble. She discussed her bullish case for Tesla during an interview with CNBC on Wednesday saying, now is not the time to run for the hills. She says, yeah, it's, the shares have slid, but she has been buying hand or fist. She says the company's poised for a turnaround, as in a few years, electric cars and trucks will comprise 80% of vehicle sales, Wood said. And you either believe that or you don't. I happen to believe it. I think that this is a hiccup in EV, EV sales, and we will see a continuation of the S-curve. Wood has, a, has been a faithful Tesla bull once had a price target of 5000 as I mentioned. She pegged her bull case to Tesla's plan to roll out a robo-taxi, which could drive up to $10 trillion, that's with a T, in revenue by 2030. She said the robo-taxi will, and uh, we know this, will save lives. Her firm, ARK Invest, bought millions of dollars of Tesla shares over the past week ahead of the first quarter sales report. And she saw her sales, her her shares dip for a minute, but no longer. They're on the way back up. Uh, so I don't consider the street to be a great source of of uh, content, but once in a while they have a story that deserves some uh, commentary. So Adam Jonas back again with his thoughts uh, over what we've seen. Uh, Morgan Stanley's Adam jo Jonas says the week. First quarter update is further evidence of a shakeout phase in the EV market. He revised his own 2024 delivery ta tally for Tesla down by 250,000 units to 1.75 million units, which would be, of course, a 3.3 decline from 2023 levels. Now, in order to get there, you have to take the addition of 75 to 100,000. This is now me, not, not that article you realize we're going to have Cybertruck, at least 75,000, maybe 100,000 units of Cybertruck adding to last year's numbers. You, you, you have to believe that the Model 3 is going to see increases based on this phenomenal car that they're producing. Now, you might see some decreases in Xs and Ys. I'm sorry, Xs and Ss. Uh, but really, in order to see a decrease overall, you're going to have to see the Y come down by... 100,000 or more. Anyway, that's what he's thinking. I don't agree. Jonas, who lowered his Tesla price target by $25, still has it at $320 a share. He's taken, I'm sorry, he's uh, dropped at another 10 now to 310, keeping his buy rating in place. Negative developments, he says, in the global EV market very much mattered to Tesla and should reasonably have a negative near-term near impact on the price of the stock. But near-term fearful versus long-term greedy. We think numbers bottom by the end of second quarter and before a major rejuvenation of the model cycle. I am assuming by that he means the model Y, uh, which right now people are saying doesn't happen until next year, the Juniper. Um, maybe he knows something we don't. Man, I would love to see the Model Y Juniper hitting in the third quarter. That would be fantastic. Um, and then he says that Tesla's other projects still have value. Jonas has argued that Tesla should be valued as more than its current market price based on the host of other business dynamics tied to EV sales. These include the licensing of its full self-driving driver assistance system, as well as its battery, energy, and insurance divisions. He says the Dojo supercomputer, which is powered by AI technologies, could add another $500 billion to Tesla's marketing value. So a, through a faster adoption rate in mobility, say robo-taxis, and network services software as a service. He doesn't even mention Optimus. Crazy. All right, this is Randy Kirk. Hit that like button. And then while you're there, hit subscribe. I need more subscribers. I'm almost at 21,000. I'd love to hit 21,000 uh, this week. I think it could happen. So uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, I don't know why. Maybe you're just new to the channel. I hope you've enjoyed it so far. Hit the subscribe button and then notify because CERN Basher will be here four times 
over the weekend. So this afternoon, we'll see CERN. Then again, probably on Friday, one on Saturday, one on Sunday. Remember, on Saturday morning, hopefully Larry will be calling in from, I think, Paris uh, to help unscramble whatever it is that Kathy Wood says on Friday night. Now, maybe you like to watch the Kathy Wood program Friday night directly. Actually, it'll probably be Saturday morning. Recently, they've been Saturday morning. We'll see. But anyway, maybe you like to just watch her and not us. But I think we bring some color to what she says and we cover it carefully. We go line by line over what she says. So all that's coming up in addition to Bradford Ferguson tonight. And I know he's very passionate right now about what's happening with his brand new Cybertruck and his FSD and everything else that he's been working on. Anyway, uh, also, you might want to drop down into the description below. Why would you go down there? Well, I give a program and I, I give you advanced uh, notice down there of every program, what's coming up this week, next week. Um, you know, usually seven to 10 days in advance, you can see what is coming up in the future. Down there also is a, a link where you can go over and join Patreon. And that'd be wonderful. That'd be fantastic. I would certainly appreciate it. Okay, Bruce Kamich. Kamich, C-K-A-M-I-C-H. There are so many names that I've never heard of before. He's a technical analyst who has used price and volume charts for insight into stocks and markets for more than 50 years. His technical, he's like an old guy like me. His technical analysis enabled him to accurately predict that Tesla stock would climb to $300 before declining to $193 and to warn of, downs, warn of downside risks in January and February. Oh yeah, I predicted $300 last year. Nobody gives me credit for that. I did not predict that it would drop down from 300 back into the under 200 area. So this guy, he's done a good job. That's why I'm reporting on him this morning. Now, this is a technical analyst. Doesn't look to me like he spends a lot of time on the fundamentals, but I don't know that for sure. The daily volume histogram has been weakening since June. I've never heard of a daily volume histogram. Hist well, I guess I could understand what that means. And yeah, I've paid attention to that before. Anyway, the on balance volume OBV line has struggled since July. The moving average convergence divergence, the MACD oscillator, has spent most of its time below the zero line since August. On balance volume is essentially a running total of up minus down volume, while MACD measures momentum. Okay, <laughs> believe me. I do not get this deep into technical. Kamich would want to see improving buy to sell day volume and positive MACD momentum to have the conviction that the path of least resistance will be for the stock to go higher. His point and figure chart calculations aren't encouraging either. In February, the daily PNF chart revealed the target of 150, but now the target has a ratcheted lower to 143, and the weekly PNF chart has targeted 117. Of course, PNF charts aren't guaranteed, nothing is, and they don't provide insight into when a stock might achieve a target, so they should be viewed as only one part of the puzzle. That makes total sense. There are many weird things happening in the current economy as we change subjects here. Um, let's talk about the economy. By the way, I don't see Tesla going to 117 unless the market crumbles. The market needs, to, for, in my fundamental way of looking at things, the market would have to crumble for Tesla to go back into the 117, 107 range. Uh, it, uh, going down to 143 absolutely could happen. Although, again, I think we'd have to see some market deterioration, uh, the general market to deteriorate somewhat in order to see those kind of numbers. Um, I don't see Tesla with a strong up move until we see more FSD. We're, right now, we're seeing kind of a pause in the excitement over the FSD because the these various iterations are coming out one after another, and there's a little benefit to one and a little detriment. And it's not as strong as it was last week in terms of up, 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 in terms of how great FSD is as these iterations are coming out. All right, let's talk about the economy. There are many, many weird, well, there were, the last, the last three days has been extremely weird out there. We'll take a look at a minute and see if it's continuing, if, if the weirdness has, has st started again. But this morning, it hasn't been quite as weird. But let's talk about some of those things. My goal here on this channel is to see things before everybody else does. And I mean everybody else. Like last year, I know I harp on it. But last year, I said, 
the inflation numbers were coming down. I said all year, I said that was happening. And all year, I said there would be no recession when everybody was calling recession. So I'm, I try to stay ahead of this stuff. I have picked some major, major stuff. Um, I, I can show you my blog posts from 2006 when I was predicting what was going to happen Pretty much that I, I I didn't predict a massive crash like 2000 it happened in 2007 2008, but I was seeing a real significant problem and talking about it with regard to those derivatives very early on. As was by the way, George Bush was also saying the same thing. And seven times went to Congress to try to get Congress to do something about derivatives, and every time the congressmen were making too much money on what was taking place. In my opinion, anyway. So if you if some of the things that I say that are completely different than what everybody else is saying, take them with a grain of salt, but put them in your kit, in your kit bag as part of your analysis. And if they make sense, maybe once in a while, you'll be able to make some money off of it. Anyway, here's what's happening right now is, is crazy. We've had this massive run up in the dollar, gold, and oil, precious metals, all at the same time. Not normally the way things work. Normally the dollar is going to be going the opposite way of gold, oil, et cetera, because all of these are worldwide commodities and they're dollar denominated. And so if the dollar is going up, there is a normal downward uh, price revision in all these categories. The advance in gold and oil prices has somehow been igno has ignored the persistent strength of the U.S. dollar, according to this article, I think it was in Barron's. The ICE U.S. dollar index, the DXY, which gauges the dollar's strength against a basket of six rivals, with the euro receiving the heaviest weight, traded as high as 105.1 on Tuesday morning, its highest level since November 14th, according to FactSet. Investors want to know if that hints at a shifted relationship between the greenback and commodities. Traditionally, gold and the buck exhibit a negative correlation where strength in one signals weakness in the other. Yet this relationship has weakened recently with both assets experiencing a flight to safe trade amid global economic and geopolitical uncertainties. Oil, on the other hand, also has an inverse relationship with the dollar. A barrel of crude oil is priced in dollars across the world. So when the U.S. dollar is strong, the price of oil should be lower in dollar terms, meaning investors need fewer dollars to buy the same amount of oil. Remember, part of the reason that I have some interest in this and, and, and have studied it for so long is I was, I've been involved in international trade my entire career since I think the age of 23. So this is not normal and something, this is not me speaking, not the article. This is not normal and something has to break. Now this morning, things are going much more normally, at least they were during the first 10 minutes. We'll look in a second, to see what's happening now. Maybe the president is gonna get lucky and the economy will stay kind of in this middling range until after November 7 or 6 or whatever. Uh, I haven't looked at the exact date this year for voting. But I'm starting to smell trouble. I have when I, I it's not I, I'm not making a strong statement yet. I'm still 40, 60, saying 40% chance of a recession, 60% chance that we don't have one. But I'm I just I'm nervous right now. One last thought. Productivity is the cure. And we are a month away. About this time next month, we will get the productivity numbers for the first quarter. And we'll see if we've continued up in that five, six, seven percent range or whether that has dropped out. I'm expecting the productivity numbers to be huge and to be continuing to be extremely high. Um, and that's why we're continuing to see the market do well, as well as the overall GDP do well. OK, initial jobless claims came in a little higher than expected, up 9,000 to 221,000 versus expected 215. But it's a nothing burger. This is the range that's been for months. So the market, I don't think, will be affected at all by that number, other than to may, maybe be a little predictive that tomorrow might not come in as hot as it could. I doubt it. I, I don't have any idea what's going to happen with those numbers tomorrow. And remember, we're not going to cut tomorrow. We're not going to be concentrating on this month's numbers. We're going to be looking at the revisions <laughs> because the, the, the initial numbers that come in are complete hogwash. And so what we want to see is how much do they revise? 
the February and the January numbers. On the other hand, it's worth noting that the number of people receiving benefits after an initial week of aid, this is a proxy for hiring, dropped 19,000 to 1.791 million. Now, that's a very, very small drop, but it's just a, a, a little bit of a directionality there. The U.S. trade deficit widened in February for a third month in a row, but that is not surprising. When you've got the dollar this crazy, then you could expect that the international trade is not going to go in favor of the of, of the United States. It makes our exports more expensive. It makes our imports less expensive. And so having having uh, the the uh, trade deficit go up is to be expect to be expected. Anyway, and then this is just breaking. Ford, after a very good quarter with their hybrid sales, uh, they've decided to delay work on their BEV SUV in order to emphasize hybrids, specifically making that strategic decision. I think that is not going to age well. Okay, let's take a look at where stocks are right now. Uh, we have got Tesla this morning continuing to be up slightly. It was up more earlier. It's up 47 cents right now. It was up, up, up over a dollar earlier. We've got the Dow Jones up 163, NASDAQ up 142, and the S&P up 36. We have got the Magnificent Seven all up except for Google down. Don't know why. Didn't see anything on Google this morning. Uh, just for fun, NVIDIA up $7. We've got all of the Kathy Woods up this morning. Now, earlier, except for Square, which is down a little bit, now, the uh, the bonds earlier had been off like three, four basis points, and that could be why we're seeing some of this action. Um, now, let's look at these percentages real quick. We have got the Dow Jones up 0.43, NASDAQ up 0.86, S&P up 0.70, and Tesla up 0.15. Uh, Tesla, it looks to me like it's trying to go negative right now, but it's been up and down all positive this morning, but could go into negative territory here in a second. Um, all right, let's go ahead and look at the bonds. Um, just a second. Uh, all right, we've got the 30 is still here. It is down 0 0.3, uh, so 3.4 basis points to 4.321. That's still very, very high. You've got the two-year down just a little tiny bit, uh, four tenths of a basis points. So, uh, and you've got the two month uh, up actually this morning. But what you've got is that spread between the two, the ten year and the two month now is only about 100 basis points. That is the lowest it's been um, for quite a while. I'd have to go back and look to be sure exactly. But you do see the two year and the ten year spread continuing to be wide. Uh, whatever that means, because we're now at, I have to double check this, Kathy, I'm sure we'll talk about it tomorrow or, or Saturday morning, uh, the, maybe the longest in history of this inversion. Okay, that's what I'm saying, there's some weird stuff going on, stuff that is hard to understand. You've got U.S. crude down 10 cents this morning, but it's sitting at 85.33. Um, and uh, Brent at 89.28. So both of those staying very, very high, uh, definitely the highest in, in quite some time. You've got the dollar edging a little bit lower, but still way, way, way up uh, at the top of where of, of the, the range. Natural gas down a tiny bit, 0.49% this morning, uh, sitting at 183. Um, again, pushing up. Uh, it's been closer to $2, but I don't think we've broken $2 this year. Um, and we've got gold down 950, but still at over 2,300 at 2,305. Copper up this morning at 422. That has continued up, up, up. I, I think it's got to be six, seven days in a row now that copper has been up. You have got the Bitcoin up this morning, 1556 up at 67441, but still way off of its recent high. Um, okay, so that is where we're seeing things. Let's go back and see if that uh, if Tesla has broken down. No, Tesla decided not to go into the red and is perked up and is moving up slightly at this time. Okay, 
yesterday you might have missed that scott walter video you know once a week we have scott on wednesday mornings sometimes more often if there's breaking news but scott was on yesterday morning and as always it was insightful and useful stuff about various aspects of how his experience with fsd is telling him many many things about where we're going not only with fsd on cars but also with robots very good stuff you might want to check that out i will leave a card and then as i mentioned we have got uh sir basher coming and com coming over and over again today tomorrow saturday sunday probably four days in a row I'm, and i've seen the stuff i've seen what he's going to be doing he showed me ahead of time where he's going <laughs> this week and some really great stuff you're going to want to see all that and then of course uh, we've got Brad Ferguson. To, I'm Brad. Brad? Yeah, Bradford Ferguson. We've got Bradford Ferguson on tonight uh, to help us talk about the good news, which right now, at least, it looks like we could be in the green again today. Look, that's all I got for you today. It has been great talking to you.